My indie game aims to combine all the best bits of Minecraft, Stardew Valley and plenty of my other favourite games too, but I couldn't help but feel that something was missing, and I just can't figure out what it could be. Pets! So I think the best thing for me to do is just to jump into Blender and get 3D modelled and see how it goes. All right, so the basic model is done. So I've based it off of this, this dog here, which is done in block bench. It's just a little tutorial. Use the reference of this border collie and then I get rid of it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And now I've just got to rig it up and get it textured and then I can get into the game. Six hours later. All right, so I did originally want to wait till I finished texturing the dog till I showed you the animations, but it's just so good, I can't wait. All right, so here he is in Unity. You can see he's all rigged up. So if I grab this, it moves his tail, his neck, head, you know, the basics. And I've got a little animation window on my other monitor. So if I just play a quick idle animation. Look at that. How good is that? See his tail wagging, mouth moves a little bit, ears sort of twitching about. You can have him lying down. It's a bit of funniness here, but it's not it's not the end of the world, it's kind of hidden by his legs, so I'll see. I'll see how I feel about that. He looks so happy. <laughs> and I like this one. Is his tail's wagging? Just sitting there like a good boy. And now I've got to get on with texturing it, so I will see you when that's done, or in a second. All right, so the texture for the first dog is done. Uh, I'll just set up the camera and quickly show you. And here it is. So it's actually based off of uh, my dog, Holly, who unfortunately died last year. She was a Labrador cross collie. Uh, she was 15. And so I thought this would be a good way of sort of keeping her memory alive just to put her in my game. So you can see the details around, it's sort of, it's got that pixel art style that I do for the characters. So here she is sitting down, the little tail wagging away, lying down asleep, uh, obviously with the eyes still open. <laughs> and what the plan is, is to have five different dog textures. So that's a Labrador cross collie, like I say. Um, and I want to have maybe a German Shepherd and a Border Collie and a couple of others. So when you get to pick your pet, and it'll be between a cat and a dog, you'll have a few different options of what breed of dog or what breed of cat you want. And uh, now I've just got to figure out how exactly the pet gaining mechanic will work and who you'll get it from, when you'll get it and how the AI will work. Alrighty, I've got the dog walking around in the game and I've added the animations and a couple of the behaviours I want to add. So I will just sit down and show you that quickly. So there are three behaviours I want to get implemented for the dog. Uh, so I can talk to him quickly. And he barks and looks at me and stares right in my face. So I've got wait at home, uh, follow me and go foraging. So I've got the first two implemented. So if I do this, he'll bark and he'll walk off. And how it works is there's a 60% chance that he'll pick a random location within 30 meters of your bed. So because I haven't actually slept, this is my default bed. Or he'll just come and sit by it. So it's kind of up to him. And if it's after nine o'clock in the evening, he'll actually just go to sleep. And the follow behavior is what you'd expect. He'll just follow you around. So if I walk over here, you can see he's following me. I'll run away, he'll run after me. And as you're wandering around, what he'll do is he'll actually look for forageable items within a certain radius of you. And when he finds one, he'll bark like you just saw, I'll wait a couple of seconds just to make sure I'm still interested and then he'll lead me over to it. So you can see it worked there and then he's done and then he'll keep following me. So. I originally had this so that he would check quite frequently and quite far away, up to 30 meters. But what I noticed was happening was that he would just sort of piss off in the other direction, which would be kind of annoying if you're trying to, you know, go on a bit of an exploration and your dog just keeps going the other way. So I kind of limited it and changed the behavior to be a bit more uh, helpful, I think. <laughs> and now the last behavior I want to do is the go foraging behavior. 
So what I was thinking of doing for the forage behavior was kind of a combination between the go home and the follow me behavior where the dog will walk around or find a, a random point within a certain radius of your spawn point. Uh, he'll wander around there and he'll search for a forageable item. So those would be, you know, things that the player can pick up like mushrooms or the plant fibers or dandelions or bird or anything like that. He'll walk up to it. He'll sort of dig at it. He'll pick it up. Uh, he'll get removed from the world and then it will get added to his sort of fake inventory and he'll be carrying that. And then once he's got an item, he'll go home back to your bed and he'll drop it. And then he might just sit there for a couple of seconds and then do that again. And what that could mean is that you could leave him to forage around your spawn point and um, you could go off on a little exploration, go do a quest up a mountain or something. So it allows for a bit of automation almost. Right, I'm having issues and I wanted to show you that game dev isn't all glory in making cool dog behavior. It is in fact pain and suffering. So you may be thinking, well, where's the dog? I'll show you where he is. He's under the bloody ground, isn't he? Because this all happens, the world loading and the server and client communicating with each other, it all happens asynchronously, meaning that the server and client can talk to each other and finish their initial handshake, allowing the client to spawn before the world is finished loading. And about halfway between that point is when the pets spawn. So what's gonna happen is, you know, the spawn points here by that bed, so he spawns up here and there's nothing for him to stand on because the world hasn't finished loading yet. So he just sort of plops down into the water. Half a second later, the world loads. And that's the result. The annoying thing is, I've actually got a thing implemented that's supposed to wait till the world's loaded, but clearly doesn't work. So I need to fix that. And uh, yeah, it's very, very irritating. One pathetic soap story later. All right, so here's our dog. Uh, I go and talk to him and say, go forage. What he's going to do is he's going to wander off, find say what to forage. And I made a slight change to my original plan. So I had said that I wanted him to find, say, mushrooms in the world or bits of grass that the player could generally pick up. But I've changed it now to he goes to a random location and digs and has a 20% chance of finding something or not. So you can see here he's not finding anything because of the fact that he only digs for a couple of seconds and it finishes. But if he digs for a bit longer, if we get lucky, you'll see how that works. So here you go, you can see he's digging for a lot longer. Keeps going, keeps going. And that's him found something. So he's going to walk back to the player's spawn point, which because I haven't placed a bed in this world, it's actually just the starting boat down here but it would be the player's bed generally. Gonna walk back and he's gonna drop down what he found and he found me a dandelion. Yeah, that's how that works. Uh, the things he can drop are burdock, fibers, which is just grass basically, dandelion, garlic and mushrooms. And yeah, that's how that behavior works. So now I've just got to get to uh, texturing some more dog skins. So I'm gonna try and do maybe like a German Shepherd, um, yeah, I'll have to figure that one out, but I'm not really sure yet. What follows is a brief construction montage. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Right, the dogs are done, so I will just show you the designs I've got for them. So here are the designs. Uh, obviously the one in the middle is the original one I made based upon my old dog, uh, a Labrador Cross Collie. And then the one on the left here is actually based upon a German Shepherd. Now given the time period, German Shepherds didn't really exist, but you know, use your imagination, you can figure something out. <laughs> And then this one over here is actually based off a dog that we helped look after recently. Um, we weren't really sure what his breed was and the owners didn't know either he was a rescue. But yeah, I liked his face and sort of his design. So I thought that it would fit well in the game. So there we go. I've now actually decided on the conditions for getting a pet. So you get them through Aedrid, who is the first character you invite to Sundermead. He's a trader and at the end of every month he'll go off trading and then come back at the beginning of the next month. 
So a level three relationship with him, which you get by buying and selling items from him. He'll give you an extra prompt in his little dialogue box and it'll say, can you get me a pet? So here we are in game. And if I go up to Adrid and speak to him, you can see that you know, it gives me the option, can you get me a pet? He's saying a pet? I reckon I could, yeah. I'll need to take a thousand gold from you though for it. Is that okay? If you don't have enough, it'll give you another bit of text. But yes, that's fine. What sort of pet do you like? And here's the menu. So you can name your pet here. So I'm going to name my pet David. Because <laughs> that's a dog's name, apparently. Uh, and I'm going to pick the German Shepherd. You click save. Uh, good choice. I'll collect it next time I go off trading. And like I say, he goes off trading on the 28th of the next month. And... On the first, you'll get a dog. Now, I've actually run through this quest already, so he should be around here somewhere. Here he is. I chose the uh, the other dog initially. Let's speak to him. Yeah, there you go. You got some nice dogs in the game. I think for the next pet, I plan on doing cats, uh, but that probably won't be for another couple of updates yet. So that's about it, I reckon. Let me know what you think of this new style. It was certainly a different experience to my usual editing style. Uh, if you like the look of my game, then I have a Steam page. I have a Discord channel, so you can keep up to date with more regular updates. And, you know, hit like and subscribe, all the standard YouTube stuff. <laughs> and hit like and subscribe and all the standard YouTube crap. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.